Hello, my name is Jason Wallace. I'm going to talk to you today through uh, practice acts and what else we've got available for you in 2024. So I had the privilege of being the principal author for the VC Chemistry Study Design. And therefore, what I really, really thought was important is that we somehow translate that study design and give you a really, really good idea of exactly how student assessments should be carried out. And what we've done is given you loads and loads of opportunities um, in terms of what you do, how you do it, and when you do it, and lots and lots and lots of options. So the learning intentions of my um, chat with you today are location, location, location. Where do you actually find practice sacks? That's probably the most important thing of all, because if you can't find them, you can't access them. This year, obviously, the new study design is um, 2024, and there are five types of sacks, and the classic structured questions is gone. And obviously what I'll be able to do is help you understand what types are now available. How are they linked to key science skills and the textbook, um, which is similar to year 11. We've obviously carried that on with year 12. What have we actually got available for you now? And how do they all fit in terms of what SAC type, task types? Um, how can you actually use our PRAC resources? What other assessments? Because we've got some new stuff for you this year as well, again, to try and save you time. And then obviously the classic poster with a little twist. Location, location, location. Where do you actually find our practice sacks? So on the platform, you'll see the most important thing is obviously is getting the correct year. So the 2024 BC units three and four book. And then even more important are making sure that you have teacher and extended with textbook. If you do not have the extended with textbook, you will not be able to access the practice sacks. You will basically see exactly what the students see. And obviously students do not have access to these. It's only the teacher with the extended textbook. So as you see there, they're currently under worksheets that may well change the tagging um, in the near future. We'll certainly let you know if it does. But as you can see there in 1B biofuels, it says there's four worksheets and two risk assessments. Now the four worksheets will correspond to two student ones, two teaching tech ones, plus two risk assessments. When I click on those, you'll see that it expands even further and you've got the student version, the teaching tech version, and then the risk assessment, which I will talk about um, later. So that's where you actually find the activities. What are the five types of SACs that pupils must do? So uh, the new study design is very, very clear and exactly which SAC types pupils must do. So as you can see, there are five. Now what's the same is the poster. Um, main difference is time being 600 words rather than a thousand. And when you read the study design as often as I have, it actually says um, almost like it gives you an option. It doesn't really give you an option. Each um, SAC must be done at least once. And there are only four types of SAC. So all those four task types must actually be done. And as you can see, here is a um, overview of those types. And if you have a look on here, you can see that in some instances, there is the words or. So you don't always have to do all of them. So if you look in task type two, it says identified assumptions or data limitations. So when you actually do a SAC, you don't necessarily need to cover all of those. You can choose specific components of it. Um, in terms of our practice SACs, 50 to 70 minutes, sustainability has to be in one of them. We've included them uh, in lots more than one. And remember, SACs count for now 50%, whereas before they only accounted for 40%. Um, and in total, what we're looking at is around, we've done around five different um, versions of each type for you to select for your students. And another important thing to remember is the SAC task type that has disappeared, uh, one that we all used to use a lot was the structured response, which is now gone. And that's why we've had to be pretty much uh, much more inventive with regard to the type of um, assessments that we can use for the pupils. So what practice sacks are available for unit three? So what we've done is, again, giving you four or five, six different versions of each task type and spread them out throughout units three and four. So here are examples of the unit three practice sacks that are available online now. All of area of study one for unit three is currently available. And as you can see there, the four task types are covered. 
there's at least one, sometimes two of each for this area of study. And obviously what you can do is um, choose one of those or two of those. You can add them to your teaching. You can add them as enrichment opportunities. You can use them as take home. But again, those are available um, for you to use. And as you can see there, three of those have a sustainability theme when in reality only one actual SAC needs to have a sustainability theme. Uh, unit three, outcome two. Um, again, a couple more there with sustainability themes, different task types again. Sometimes you'll see that certain task types lend themselves much better to particular topics. But what we've made sure we've done is spread out all the different task types. Um, so there's at least four or five different versions of each task type throughout the whole course. So um, again, here's the remainder of unit three, outcome two. You can see there's some really, really good ones there. Um, the task type three, which is pretty much the um, style where you have to use something real world and then apply it. So how are these practice sacks linked to key science skills? So in chapter 12 um, of the new 3-4 book, we completely updated it from the year 11 book. And as you can see, all of these SAC task types they have very specifically what they're about, but as you can see, the key science skills dot points relate directly to what we've done in the year 12 textbook. So if students need a refresher, it's very easy for them to go back and have a look. How can you use the practice site resource? So the main thing is obviously they're downloadable, they're editable, very easy to convert. They are all within 30 to 50 marks. And in terms of what style are they, as you can see, this one is taken from one where it's 45 marks. It's really, really easy to um, manipulate these, adapt them to your class. But again, they are uh, really high level questions, similar to what we use in the book, not just sort of throwaway questions and time fillers, because ultimately the whole point of a practice sack and an actual sack is to rank your kids as fairly and equitably as possible. So how can you use a practice sack? So what you could do is if for any reason you used one of our practice sacks as an actual sack it's very very important and this is almost a disclaimer that you have to heavily adapt them if you were audited it's very important that the information that the students were presented with is original and there is no situation where they could have um, come across those beforehand but what we've done is because we have so many different say task ones you can see how you can use them um, in terms of a rotational basis, either for practice or if you did heavily adapt one for an actual SAC. So um, other things, teaching tech guides, really, really important. So all of our SACs, practice SACs are based on things that we've done lots and lots of times already. Um, so they're not just made up results. So the teaching tech guide is a real insight for teachers, which will save you a lot of time because the way in which it's organized is hopefully that you just can put it out to the class and you don't really have to worry about it because it's been done before in an actual classroom and environment. So the useful tips, again, this is the, the element that, because we have lots of ex-teachers here, that we add these little bits in and they're sometimes what really, really matter in terms of, you know, what's the best value that you can get out of this activity this practice sack for your students, it's very important that you read these useful tips. Sample results. So again, um, having taught all through COVID, sometimes you've got to pivot really quickly. Kids can be away. You can change the style of the practice sack. And so you can actually give them an analysis. So again, we always give you results. And again, these results are based on what actually happens in a classroom in Victoria um, and they're authentic. So it really, really helps students with regard to their genuine learning. Just like the textbook, um, again, something we're really good at, we've always been good at, is we give fully worked solutions, really pay a lot of uh, importance to significant figures, clearly show where the marks are coming from, give you examples of rubrics. Again, so what we're trying to do is give teachers back time, make it much, much simpler for teachers to um, get a really authentic experience for the students and ultimately rank them fairly. Alternatives and extensions, again, we give you lots and lots of ideas and 
set the platform up for you. But obviously what we also want is the option for teachers to add their own stamp to it. So we'll always try and put in extension opportunities and alternatives because always, you know, we might not always have the, the chemicals or the apparatus or the time to do these. Sustainability is a really important thing for us here at Edrello is that when we can, so for instance, when students are making biodiesel, why not get them to use um, oil that they brought from home rather than going out and buying it or buying some very overpriced canola oil from um, a tech company. So where possible, we always try to make them as sustainable as possible where maybe you have to buy it once, but then you can use it every single year after that. So practice sacks and risk assessment. So we will always provide you with a filled, um, pre-filled risk assessment on risk assess. But what is very, very important is that those risk assessments then become the property of your school and your department. You have to go through them. You will obviously adjust them. But the most important thing is that yourself as the teacher uh, and the lab technician both sign and date it. And then that becomes a valid risk assessment. Using ours isn't valid for you. If WorkSafe came around and audited you, they would not be valid. You have to take ownership. We just make it again very, very easy for you, putting all of that information pre-filled in, but they're not by any means 100% complete and specific to your school and your needs. So again, I can't say it enough that you have to take ownership of those. But again, hopefully you think, thank you very much, Enrolo. It's worth it. We've got it. It's really easy to adapt. And obviously risk is minimized because that is the whole point. Um, ten, in terms of finding it, very simple. The lesson codes um, correlate to the activity codes, the practice act codes. So you simply, if you put in year 12 chemistry and Edrolo, all you'd have to do is put in 1B um, and the actual SAC activity or practice SAC activity or whatever activity it is would come up very, very quickly. So long as you use Edrolo as the author and the teacher. So this is taken from our year 11 practice SAC resources uh, activities. And this again shows you how in year 11, we've really prepared the students in year 12 for these types of practice sacks uh, because this is what we covered um, in year 11. And you can see all of those main themes that come in year 12 were split up uh, and basically students had a fantastic opportunity to really, really dig into the very, very specifics of the key science skills that are gonna be necessary for their, their actual sacks in year 12. So you can trust us and have confidence in us that we've really year 11 leading into year 12, the activities into the practice sacks really is gonna give the kids hopefully an advantage over other students who haven't used these resources. What are the practice assessments that we're gonna do? What we really wanted to concentrate on this year is rather than doing practicals, the old school practicals, that if you think um, we've got loads and loads of experience of doing, you've already got all the resources, rather than spending our time creating those again for you, what we really wanted to do was concentrate on giving teachers time back by creating these practice sacks for you. We have done some classic practicals and the ones that we've chosen are the ones that would be new. So therefore, what I hope we're doing is the, the assessments and the resources that we're providing for you are things that you would have had to spend lots and lots and lots of hours creating which as i as an ex-teacher i know it's very difficult um, to find the time so as you can see there those first six are you know isolating from plant extracts and using iodine value we've created those classic practicals for you because generally you may not have a copy of those um, and then the rest of the time we've devoted really to these practice sacks now something that's new this year that i really wanted to do because uh, there's lots and lots and lots of practice exams available at the end of the year, whether it's um, loads and loads of companies out there and they tend to do unit exams. What I thought really would be beneficial to teachers is to give them more bite-sized um, revision opportunities. So we've done the four area of studies. We've kept it pretty simple. Uh, it's probably 50 to 60 minutes. Again, it can be done as take home, same quality um, as you're used to with regard to the questions. There'll be a mix of VCAR questions and Edrolo questions and adapted questions as well. 
So again, that's some extra and the unit three hour study one's already done. So that will be uploaded really, really soon. Um, but all the rest will be um, in time and all the unit four practice acts will be in plenty of time for you to plan and use them. So the final thing is the poster. Obviously, we've had lots of practice with the poster. What we probably haven't had a lot of practice with the poster is, is reducing it to 600 words. In the textbook, year 12 textbook, there's an example of the poster in the format where you've got that huge, big um, summary sentence in the middle. Uh, and what we've also done, because I think it's really important that students are, are on a level playing field with regard to kids who do uh, viscom versus those who don't. So we've actually provided a um, downloadable and editable poster template online as well. Therefore, if the whole class uses this, the actual quality of the content is what should be rewarded rather than what it actually looks like. So hopefully you'll find that useful. So in summary, loads of practice sacks, loads of choice, really easy to plan. Hopefully you find them really useful. Thank you.